All right, so I thought I'd walk through the definition of a derivative and then how it applies using examples. And then I can show you in the end just a short form of how to do a derivative without this big rule. But this rule is important when you're learning calculus because you need to understand where the derivative is coming from. So what is the definition of a derivative? Well, to say what a derivative is, it's f prime of x. So we're taking the prime version or the derivative of the function. What is that defined as? It's going to be as the limit of h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So that's our definition of a derivative. So now we need two things before we can solve. So in most cases, we're going to be given the fact that we have an f of x. And let's suppose that f of x is equal to x squared. So now our f of x plus h is just simply plugging in x plus h into where x squared is. So we're going to get x plus h squared. And then what is that equal to? That's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And I mean, you can do that by just foiling it out, um, which would just be to write off in the corner here. You're just saying x plus h times x plus h. And that gives you that form there. And then it will simplify to here. So now we just need to take these two values here, so f of x and f of x plus h, sub them into here, and then apply the limit. Let me show you what we're going to do here. So we say limit of h approaching to 0 is f of x plus h, which we write as this. So we're going to say x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then we have to do minus f of x, which we know is x squared. So we say minus x squared all over h based on our derivative rule, which is up here. And then so now we just need to cancel out our h's before we apply this limit. So to do that, all we're going to do is just cross up this h, and then anywhere there's an h, we're just going to cancel that. So we cancel the one off here, we cancel one of them off here, so we're left with one h there, and then the remaining we don't have any there. So now we're going to say that we can also cancel these two because x squared uh, minus an x squared is just zero. So now what are we left with? We're just left with the 1, 2x here plus an h. So we're going to say 2x plus h with a limit in front. Always write the limit in front. That's our form. And then we just need to apply this h equals 0. That's going to eliminate the last term. So we get that our f of prime of x is equal to 2x. And so in calculus, when we're doing a really short form of this, essentially what we're doing is that if we were to just start with f of x and they said, give us f prime, and we didn't want to go through this entire step, there's a really simple rule. All you have to do is basically go, if f of x is equal to x squared, our rule to get to our f prime of x is just saying we drop whatever's in the exponent. So we're going to say, bring down the 2 leave the x here, but then just subtract 1 off that 2. So then we're just left with 1 in the exponent, so we're not even going to put it there. So these two should be equivalent here. Between those two, if we use the long form or if we use the short form, either way we're going to land at the same spot. All right, so let's just work on a second example here. I'll refresh what the definition of a derivative is here. So we're, the definition is f of x is equal to lim of h approaches to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Perfect. So now that we have that, uh, let's say our second example is f of x is equal to 1 over x. So then our f of x plus h that we need is just simply putting in x plus h into where x is on the original f of x. Perfect. So now we have those two, so we can sub them into our equation here. So to sub them into the equation, we see that f prime of x is equal to the lim of h to 0 of f of x plus h, which we know is here, minus f of x, which we know is 1 over x, and then all over h, which is from our definition there. So now we just need to uh, deal with this partial fraction on the top. We want to combine it so that it has a common denominator. So to do that, we're just going to multiply the x top and bottom on this side and x plus h top and bottom on that side. So when we're done, it should essentially look like this. x prime to 0, and then we'll have x in the numerator on that side, minus x plus h, because we multiplied the x plus h over to that side, x to here, 
over a common denominator of x plus x plus h because we multiplied the x top and bottom here and the h top and bottom there. So we get our simplified uh, combined fraction with the shared common denominator and then all over h. So when we have it written as this type of division, what we wanna do is we wanna use our kiss and flip rule, which will essentially combine this all into one fraction. So how we're gonna do that is essentially we're gonna rewrite out our limit, zero, and then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna say if x minus x plus h, make sure we put that in the brackets, over x, x plus h is divided by h, then when we do it by times, which is gonna be a dot, it's gonna be one over h. So to simplify that, essentially what that's gonna look like is that our lim of h going to zero of x, x plus h over x, x plus h times the h. Because when we do our kiss and flip, when we go from division dividing by h to multiplying by h, we're just gonna flip that which means that we're multiplying by one over h to the fraction that we had here. So that's just gonna move h into the denominator here. So now our, what we wanna do is we wanna just get rid of uh, the simplifying here. So what we're gonna go is equal to lim h to zero, and then what's x minus x is zero, and then we have a negative in front of that h, so we're gonna say that negative h is in our uh, numerator there, and then we're gonna write out our exact same denominator. So the x, x plus h times the h on the back side there. Perfect, so now we just have one last step here and that's to cancel those h's here. So then we're gonna say that lim h to zero and then let's cancel our h's here. So if we cancel that, that's just gonna leave a one in the numerator in front of that negative. So we get a negative one in the top over x x plus h and then so what are we left with here so let's we need to just apply our h because we have cancelled our h and then as soon as we cancel our h we know we can apply our limit uh, into the formula so now we're going to say as h approaches zero this goes to zero what are we left with that's going to be equal to negative one over x squared because essentially the x's will just multiply and there's a zero there so it doesn't get multiplied and it's just eliminated. So let's double check this on the second page here using our formula. And then so now our final step is just to say that if we said that our f prime of x is equal to negative one over x squared, can we prove that using the short way that I mentioned in the first example? So if our f of x was equal to one over x, then to get to our f prime of x, essentially what we have to do is we have to move this to the numerator to apply that rule. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a question mark here while we solve this. If we move x to the numerator, what are we doing? We're essentially inverting it. So that means that f of x, which is equal to one over x, will become x negative one because it's the inverse and as soon as you have that inverse that means you're essentially equating it to this these statements are congruent they're the exact same thing and then so what did we do in our first example well we drop the exponent in front so we drop this if we say that f prime of x we're going to write is equal to we'll drop the negative one and then you're going to have x but then we need to subtract one in the exponent so that's gonna give us a negative two. And then so what's our last step here to simplify? Well, we say, oh, if we have an exponent that means an inverse, we're just gonna have negative one in the top, move our x down, and then just have a positive exponent, which implies that we've moved it and we've inverted it. So as long as we've shown that we have this statement is equal to this one from our long form, we're good to go. And like I said before, you'd wanna do the short form check and if the short form check turns out to be different from your regular answer, I would go to the long form and see where you went wrong because nine times out of 10, you're gonna make the mistake in the long form rather than just this two-step short run here.